Welcome to the service design questions and answers part of this webinar. Most questions will be about this idea of building your own service design principles at the library. The first question we have is how hard should you work on your service design principles library? To me, basically, it's like an endurance sport, like running every day, running for a marathon. You know, it's a practice that you do over years and that's never really finished. And I think that changes the way that we work. If you train for endurance sports, it's not something that in one week you'll be done and that's it. It's something that you train for many, 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 many days to build up the right mindset and the right tools. There is this, uh, this piece of research that was uh, mentioned by S Stephen Seeler in his TED talk that looks at how uh, endurance athletes really train. And one thing that I found ex extremely interesting to me is this notion that around 80% of their trainings are done in low intensity. You know, that are easy trainings. And these are people who do like extremely extreme stuff like marathons, ultra marathons, and this kind of stuff. But when they train, most of their training is done at low intensity because they know that they have to repeat that all day, day, day. So they, they don't need to put out. And that's what we see also with the fact that the super high intensity is about 20 to 10% of it. And the somewhat hard is only around 10%. So the goal is definitely not to burn out, but to get better over time. And I think the same applies to a service design principles library. It's not on finding all the principles right now, and building them in one month and having all stored there, but rather to set a mindset of curiosity to capture observations that you're making over the years and then slowly getting there that you have something that looks more like a library. And maybe from time to time, you say, okay, now I'm going to spend a few days where I'm going to improve all my library, maybe the sort, do some sorting in it. And that's where maybe there's more this high intensity effort. And another inspiration for me is coming from the book Effortless, where there is a story about uh, uh, Emerson who reached this house pool and who was the first to reach it with his team. And in fact, there was another guy who also had a team trying to reach the South Pole, but sadly, he didn't make it. And the approach of Emerson was very interesting because his approach was, if it's a good day, bad day, no matter what, we do a certain amount of kilometers or miles for my American friends. And the other guy who didn't make it, and sadly, even his team died, when, he, when the weather was good, they pushed and went forward. But when the weather was bad, they just stopped and waited in the tent for the weather to be better. And so were, they were more in a high intensity effort, like crazy uh, mode. And Anderson's team was more in a, okay, let's just build our practice, go forward slowly, 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 and we'll get there. So I think there, there is something tells us that even uh, if explorers like Emerson use this idea of not putting too much effort in one bill, but rather small efforts, smaller efforts over a longer period. And I think this is something that can inspire us when we build services and principles libraries. The second question is, what are healthy goals to have for a services and principle library? What could be to have a number of principles for the year? For example, you might say, hey, this year I want to observe and write about or capture maybe 10 things that inspire. That's a cool, a cool rule. Maybe that's even less than once a month. Quite, quite a cheap. For myself, what I'm trying to do at the moment is to have 100 principles per year, but that's because I'm really investing in that idea a lot. And I'm setting a time frame where I say, until my kid gets to school, I want to have 100 new principles each year that gives me like this motivating goal. But again, it has to be a healthy thing as I have invested, uh, I put a lot of time 
uh, on the side for this. Obviously, my number is quite high, but you know, starting with 10 for the year is something that is quite healthy and quite motivating too. Or you can take another approach, which is the Emerson approach, as we saw from one other 39 question right before, which is to just define how much time you spend on it every day. For example, you might say, hey, each day, I'm just going to invest 10 minutes to reflect on what are things that I observed today, read about today, that inform me for my service and practice. That's it. If you find something wonderful, uh, you have 10 minutes to write about that, and maybe you you go further, but maybe you just don't find anything in those 10 minutes, and that's also okay, because it's just the idea of getting to Next question. How can you make a service design principles library that is useful not only for yourself, but for others too? The first thing I would say is, uh, and it's something that I learned and used from my last book, Service Design Principles 201 to 3 which is to end each principle with a question. I think that's really helpful because when you end with a question for a person that is reading, uh, it helps this person think, think oh, Okay, now I have to answer this, and the answer to the question should be something that helps the person get into practice. I think that's a very valuable thing, so that it's not just, oh, this is a long reading time that I had, but then asking the question so that people start thinking, how does this apply to me? Then another thing that you can do to help out people, uh, if you're building a service application library for yourself, maybe you could say, hey, here is a little newsletter where people can subscribe to receive your latest uh, principles. Maybe it's once a month, maybe it's just whenever you have one, a new one that is coming. But this would be lovely because so people get notified when something new um, is written uh, on your site and they don't have to come back to your website or, or, or to your LinkedIn profile or whatever to find out if you've got something. Do. And I think that's something which is quite useful and that uh, people uh, seem to, to really like. Another thing that you can do to help out people is to link to external sources and inspirations. Uh, this helps people to go beyond what you wrote and find the ori original sources or additional resources. You know, so, for example, if you mention a study, it's nice to have a link to that original study so that people can make uh, an opinion for themselves and see, oh, I, um, do I agree with the interpretation that Daniela knows about this or, or not? Or maybe there is stuff that you say, oh, there's a definition about a term that might be interesting that then links to a Wikipedia page where people can go and be curious and even find more. So I think here the idea is really to say it's not only about your content, but also guiding people towards more content from external sources that will help people get more curious and learn. A lovely thing that I've been experimenting in the past that's also quite valuable, not only for other people, but also for me, is the ability to comment. Given if you publish your principles, put a, a place where people can leave their comments. Because then what will happen, people will share feedback with you, to improve your principles and your ideas, which is a good thing. But also, they will share additional examples, like additional tips that might be very useful, not only for you, but also for all the other people that are in the world. Now, another question. What are daily practices I could have to build my own service design library? One simple thing that you can do, which takes just one minute, is look at your phone, go in the... Uh, photos app and look at the past photos of this week. You know? What this will do, it will, re uh, it will remember you all the different experiences that you had. And you will find one thing to say, oh, this remembers me how that cafe, coffee place did something lovely when they brought out the coffee. And then from there, you can learn something new from an experience that you had in the past. Another thing that you can do which maybe takes like five minutes, is a quick note about the service design. If we take the example of the cafe again, uh, don't, don't just think about, okay, this is an experience that I had and it was cool uh, and interesting, 
but maybe just jump down a few notes. And maybe just like bullet points, interesting things, things that they want to copy about that. If you do it on the phone, super quick, takes five minutes, and with that, you have already uh, more learning that is done. And if you want to go further, you say, hey, I'm kind of okay to invest 30 minutes a day for this practice. So it's a very good investment. Then you could say, oh, I can write a draft of a service design principle every day. Uh, just a few notes. Uh, now turning these bullet points into something that is more tangible. So again, it can be as simple as looking at your photos and reflecting. It takes one minute. Turning these reflections into rough lines uh, and notes uh, in, your, in a note app, which takes five minutes. Or Turning reflections into a first draft, that's something that is maybe more shareable with us. What are ethical considerations when building a service design principles library? I would say the first thing is mention brands when they do something right, because this helps create some positive reinforcement. Whenever I'm in an experience that I find inspiring and I write about it, then I mention where it was, what was the brand, because I think People should know that this is a this is a company that is doing good stuff. And if the company one day read about it, reads about it, they will say, "Oh, uh, our work gets noticed. That's really cool. It was worth to do it." It's well, a bit of a positive reinforcement. But on the other side, I would suggest that you never mention the brand names of the organizations where it the experience wasn't as good. You know, uh, sometimes negative experiences are really inspiring to find principles on how to better serve people. And that's good. But in these moments, I wouldn't be a dick and mention the brand name. Because you don't know if this was just a specific day uh, where things got out of hand. You know, there is no need to think about it. It says one of my ideas is whenever people do something great, be very public about it. Whenever people do something bad, use it as a learning experience, but don't think about it. Another thing from the kind of ethical, maybe even legal side, is don't quote directly what you take from uh, our books, but reformulate it. It's good first for some legal reasons. If you then want to get your stuff published, it's going to make your life a bit easier because you won't have to ask for requests to use the specific content. But the maybe the even better reason is it forces you to see if you really understood the content that you're, that you're taking from other people. Because by reformulating it, you really think, okay, did I understand it correctly? Because if I can understand it correctly, I can summarize it in my own words. And that's a good test that I have for myself. Whenever I have a quote that I find interesting, I can't reformulate it. Maybe it means that I didn't really get it and that I just liked how it sounded. Where can I find service design principles, ideas, and inspirations? I think basically three ways that you can use and that I've used in the past to get there. Live life, explore memories, and steal from others. When I say live life, basically it's whenever you're experiencing something that is interesting in your normal life, while you're shopping, while you're outside, and so on, just Take a little photo to keep track of what you find interesting. Or take a screenshot of something that you find interesting on social media. Live life and capture observations as they happen. Another uh, approach is the one of exploring your memory. That can be done, for example, with your calendar. You know, open your calendar and look at your weeks and look, oh, I did I was at this conference last week. What did I learn from that? Oh, I, want, uh, I went to visit, to visit my parents far away and I took the train. What did I learn from that experience? That's something that you can do. You can do it also with your photo albums or documents and presentations and reports from your work. You know, real thing. Now, uh, reports and look, oh, what is the big learning here? Or what was so difficult in this project that I learned from for the future? I think this is an undervalued way uh, of learning, which is taking past moments as moments of observation and looking back and say, oh, this was really lovely. Why was it lovely? Or this really sucked. 
Why did it suck? This is something that you can do to build inspiration to create your own sweet design principle. Or you can just steal from others by reading books, watching documentaries, uh, interviewing people, Googling special facts and study. You know, for example, uh, you might say, I'm very interested in improving the waiting time. So maybe that want to go on scholar.google.com and read every paper there is about waiting time to better understand uh, how others are working with this situation. Then you reformulate it, you synthesize what you read to then create new principles that will help you in your practice. Next question, how can you create your writing routine? One thing that I would say is that routines definitely help. Because if you have a writing routine uh, or habit, it doesn't take as much effort to get into the writing. You know, it's just something you do, like brushing your teeth. You, know, you don't think about it. You just know, I've just eaten, I'm going to brush my teeth. So really think about how you can build a routine because it's going to make your life much easier and it's going to make this process of building your principal library much more easy. And one thing you Simple trick is to use like a routine sandwich, if we call it like that, which is build on routines that you already have. For example, you go to the toilets. Maybe uh, each time you are on the toilets is a perfect time to take a minute and instead of watching Instagram or TikTok, look at your phone code and look at, at the past events that you have. What were the big moments that I had and what can I learn from there? From there. That's that routine sandwich. You use something that you already do, going to the toilets, and you attach to it working your principles. The other thing is try several things. For example, try different routines or try writing your principles yourself on your computer. Maybe try to dictate them to yourself. Or maybe try to do a podcast with a friend to have a conversation about those together. And then see what sticks. See what's more natural to you. For example, for myself, I've tested nearly all of these options. And I found out that one of the easiest way for me personally is still writing. Uh, that's the way that I feel is the most effective for me to produce an uh, answer design principle library. But that's very personal. And I would really suggest that you try out different things to see what sticks. And one question that's quite important is to ask yourself, when? What's the moment when I really write? And there are some specific moments that you can use. You know, is it when I'm going to the train station uh, and I'm writing as I'm going to the train station in the bus? Is it whenever I come back to work? I think defining these moments can really help you uh, to build your routine that will then uh, make your life easier once you want to start this uh, habit of building your principles or principles library. And if you're interested in this idea of, oh, I want to make it a routine, I will highly recommend that you read this book, Atomic Habits by James Clear, which gives you a lot of tips and, uh, and uh, kind of a, a process that you can use to build your own routine. Uh, it's not specific to writing or building a service design library, but it's for any routine. And I think this is something that can be Okay, these were the questions for this webinar. My question to you is, what's your question? Leave your question in the comment section below so that I can then use this inspiration for the next service design webinar. Thank you so much for watching. Cheers.